as shown here uh, with these two expressions. What we are doing is we are taking into account the changes in density through the gas compressibility factor, the inlet temperature, molecular weight, polytropic exponent, and the pressure ratio. With that, we can estimate what is the polytropic head. That is, how many kilojoules of energy is, is required to compress one kilo of gas from an initial pressure to a final pressure. So higher the polytropic head, higher is the amount of energy required to compress a kilo of gas to the required uh, pressure ratio. The, when a manufacturer provides you with the performance curves, uh, the polytropic head versus the actual, actual volumetric flow rate, the operating point must operate as close as possible to the maximum efficiency. At lower efficiencies, again, you require more power to compress the gas. So, and, and on a final note, always, always operate the gas compressor without, within the allowable limits to prevent mechanical damage. Wait, let me remove this. Uh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we go to the next slide. Draw. Yeah. Next slide. Oh, I haven't. Uh, Next slide. So what are the different kind of drivers that you have to, 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 to drive a gas compressor? You can use gas turbines, electric motors, or steam turbines. Steam turbines have, be, have been, have be, have been the, it's the oldest mechanism, and it was used even during the colonial times, or what we say, we can perceive it as, perceived as the Victorian technology. So back in colonial era, when Queen Victoria was the queen, so we simply say Victorian technology. Now, steam turbines, <coughs> you can reach pretty high um, power ratings, let's say 600, 700. I saw, I saw a post today, someone saying up to even two gigawatts, it can be, you can generate it. Because all you have to do is you have to keep adding more buckets and uh, you use superheated steam. That you simply raise it even higher and you try to extract the work as it passes through uh, the steam turbine buckets. So you can hit pretty high power ratings with, with steam turbines. However, if you wish to use a steam turbine to drive a centrifugal compressor, first you need a source of water, you need a water treatment facility, you need, to, uh, you need a water polishing unit to, to the given specification. You have to, you can have scaling issues if, uh, because if, if the water is not treated properly. You can have um, safety issues such as boiler explosions, or you can have tube ruptures. Um, uh, and steam, to generate steam, you need fuel, and fuel costs money. So when fuel prices rise, the cost of steam per unit of steam also rises. So therefore, it becomes your operating cost goes up. So steam turbines have their advantages, which is you, it, it makes more sense to use them in power plants for, for uh, electricity, for to generate electricity. But in gas compressors, you can, sorry, in uh, centrifugal compressors, you can use it, but they, but they come at a price. So then, so, but with time, let's say the World War, Second World War was one of those moments where may, there were many inventions that were invented. And one of them was the aeroplane. But the, starting from the propeller engine, like, uh, the, the, this thing which simply uses an IC engine, with the invention of the of the of the turbine by Frank Whittle, because the, the because a gas turbine was originally designed specifically to fly planes, jet planes, but then if you look at a, and if you've ever seen an aeroplane, the, you you see a big fan in front of the on 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 the on the wing. So let's say we pull up the fan, and you take the turbine part and hook it onto a hook it up to a compressor. You can run the gas compressor. So gas turbines were originally invented. For uh, the the for uh, for the aviation industry, but with time, they found other uses for industrial application applications also. Since the 60s and 70s, when the oil boom started, what happened was now, now the thing is that you're in the middle of a desert, because because if you if you observe uh, most of the the oil historically, if you observe, the Middle East has been a great source of um, oil discovery. So from the 60s and 70s, you're in the middle of a desert. You've got no power, you've got no water, you've got no uh, substation nearby for electricity. So what do you do? You can use a gas turbine. 
you can take a portion of the gas coming out of the wells and you can put a fuel gas uh, treatment skid clean up the gas and then push it into the gas into the gas turbine so it's been used in a, so de depending on the location so if you're in a place where you can you have neither power electricity or water the in the quantities that you need you can use a gas turbine and the fuel to it comes out from the wells let's say it's a booster compressor a pipeline booster compressor a portion of the gas from the pipelines itself can be routed to the gas turbine to drive it the, but the disadvantages with using a gas turbine is emissions you have cox and nox emissions you have much lower efficiencies anywhere between 35 to 52 percent depending on the the model of the turbine uh, in a gas turbine you have fuel burning and you can reach temperatures as high as anywhere between 600 to 2200 1300 degrees celsius so so the so when when that happens you can have um, uh, thermal cracking issues you can have carbon soot forming which means that you have to spend money on maintenance the other problem is a gas turbine is sensitive to the ambient condition so when you're at mean sea level the air is more denser so it so so you've got uh, it, it's more denser so when the density is more it becomes easier to you don't have to so the, the turbine does not have to struggle to deliver uh, 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 more output but let's say you're in a hot country the air temperature goes up because the gas temperature is hot naturally the power output decreases let's say you raise the you took the gas turbine and installed it in some place which is uh, well above mean sea level uh, much uh, on a much higher um, this thing let's say um, 200 uh, meters above mean sea level in in some part of the world so as you keep going higher and higher the air becomes thin that is the air density keeps reducing so again the power output decreases so there are certain disadvantages with with gas turbines the positives are when you've got no other resource you can use the uh, the, the 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 natural gas from the wells itself to run the gas turbine the disadvantages are maintenance emissions and uh, power output because of ambient condition now when these uh, uh, gas turbines were invented for aero applications for the airline industry it was for military applications first and then move to the airline industry because we are taking out the the, the 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 fan in front of it and hooking it onto a gas compressor you are deriving these these in these land and marine turbines so the the so so the, the 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 turbines that you see in process facilities are were derived from turbines that were made for aero application so that's why we say aero derivative turbines they were derived from the aviation industry now aero derivative turbines are smaller they fit snugly into a platform they are, so because of because on a platform you have space constraints if you try to increase the footprint of the platform naturally the structure weight will increase more cement more metal you, you've got to put a lot of money into it so you need something which is smaller and still packs a punch giving you the power rating that you need so aero derivative turbines can be used in offshore facilities now, aero der derivative turbines can also come in in a twin shaft design so you can have a single shaft or a twin shaft a single shaft makes more sense for power generation so if you want 50 hertz power the generator must run at 50 uh, at, at a certain speed to generate 50 hertz which means that the gas turbine connected to the generator also has to rotate at that speed but uh, in, a, in the case of a gas compressor when the feed flow rate keeps changing it keeps fluctuating up and down then the compressor speed or the compressor speed also has to be altered accordingly so that is where a twin shaft design helps you out so uh, a twin shaft design helps you out so aero derivative turbines are more for offshore applications and uh, you can also use them on uh, for onshore applications as well but for onshore applications also there's a family of of turbines what we call them land and marine so ge offers something like lm they call it lm uh, I think 6,000, LM6000 is an example. I think it gives about 55 or 56 uh, megawatts of uh, uh, power ISO rating, I think. But I have to check. I'm not sure with these numbers, but I have to check. It's just an example. The third option that you've got is electric motors. The advantage with electric motors, you don't have to bother about steam or natural gas. You just need electricity. The layout is simple. You don't have uh, like a gas turbine. You don't have to worry about lube oil leaking. I mean, the amount of lube oil that you need, lube oil and sealing with, with dry gas seals, 
You don't have those problems with electric motors. All it needs is power. <clears throat> the advantage with the electric motors over the other two kinds of uh, drivers is that you've got very high efficiencies. You can hit as high as 98% efficiencies. Now, the motors that you get are 3000 or 3600. That is, you can have a two, four, six, or an eight pole motor, and you have 50 hertz and 60 hertz current. So the formula is simple 120 into F by P. So 120, so let's say it's 50 hertz and uh, four pole motor. So 120 into 50 by four uh, comes to 120 into 50 by four uh, comes to 3000 RPM. Let's say it is uh, uh, because US is the only country which uses uh, 60 hertz. So 120 into 60 by four gives you 3600 RPM. So, so but, but does this mean that the gas compressor can run only at 3000 RPM? No, you can run it at higher speeds by using a gearbox. So if, it is a, so if you say, so let's say you have a gas compressor running at 6,000 RPM, but your motor is running at 3,000 RPM, you place a gear, uh, a gearbox there with a gear ratio of two is to one. So 3,000 to 6,000 RPM. But let's say I have to keep varying the speed. Sometimes it drops to 5,500 or sometimes it goes to 6,500 or 5,238 RPM. If you want to vary the speed,